I'm Jerry Ann Savelle, and I want to welcome you to the show today. Today we are talking about avoiding distractions and detours. And you know what it reminds me of? When I first got my license, I would see like something off in the distance, say a fire or something, and I would take my car and drive in that direction to see what it was about. Or a big strobe light at night would be going off, and I would drive over there to see what it was all about. Well, you know, the enemy does that same thing. He brings things in our lives that are like roadblocks and traps and distractions to get us off course from what God has for our lives. All of us have a plan and purpose, a destiny set by God, but the enemy is after that destiny. He's after that purpose, and he's going to set roadblocks and distractions along the way. And today I want to talk to you about avoiding those di distractions. You know, Proverbs 14, 12 tells us there's a way that seems right. There's a way that seems right to man, but the way thereof is death. It could be death to your dream. If Satan can get you distracted and, and discouraged and detoured from your dream, then you'll never fulfill God's destiny for your life. Your plan that God has set for you way before you were even created, He had a plan and a purpose set for you. You know, even yesterday when I was getting ready for these shows, I got so distracted by life. There were so many things I was having pulled in different directions. And I was like, oh, I see what's happening. I'm talking about detours and distractions, and that's exactly what the enemy was trying to do, was get me pulled off in a different direction. So that's what we're going to talk about the next several weeks, is just avoiding detours and distractions. You know, you have to get to a place in your life that you have a set course, you know it, you, you know what it is, and that you don't fall for every whim and good idea that comes your way. You know, there's a good idea and there's a God idea. And we want to go with God's idea. His way is always best. I found out in my life when I try to come up with the idea that it never works. I always end up in heartache or pain or distress that was so unnecessary had I gone with the God idea and not the good idea. So we want both. We want the good idea and the God idea working hand in hand. But we have to be aware of those distractions that the enemy's setting up on our path. You know, it'd be easy if God gave us a plan, gave us a purpose, and we could just walk it out and it was that easy. But no, the devil never wants you getting to abundant life that Jesus promised you. In John 10, 10, he tells us that the thief, that's the enemy, he comes to kill steal and destroy. But Jesus came to give you life, give it to you abundantly. The message translation says better life than you ever dreamed of. Do you think the enemy wants you living better life than you ever dreamed of? Of course he doesn't. So he's gonna set up those blocks and traps along the way to get you discouraged. You want to, um, you want to hear the voice of God, you want to follow after him and not just go with whatever thought comes in your direction, whatever idea. I tend to be that way in my life. If I'm not listening to the Lord, I tend to be very spontaneous and just like, okay, let's do it. That sounds good, let's do it. But instead we need to listen. That's what's so awesome about the Lord is that he gave us the Holy Spirit. He's our comforter, our counselor, our strengthener, our standby, our advocate, our counselor. Everything that we have need of, the Holy Spirit can help you. He can warn you ahead of time, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't date that person. Don't get involved in that business venture. The Holy Spirit can help you along the way, but you have to be listening. You have to be sensitive. You have to be aware and put God first in every decision that you make so that you're not being Lord of your life, but you're letting him truly be Lord of your life. You know, for me in my life, I know that I've um, experienced this. I've experienced heartache. I've experienced pain because I said Jesus was the Lord of my life, but Jerry was really Lord of my life. I was making the rules. I was making the decisions. And I was going with every distraction that came my way till I finally made a decision once and for all to make Jesus truly the Lord of my life 
so that He could lead me, He could guide me, He could direct me, that my steps were ordered by Him, that I wasn't going with every whim and good idea I thought was a good idea. Like Proverbs 14, 12, it seemed right, but it wasn't a God idea. So I just want to encourage you today that if you feel like you're just kind of off focus, you're not really, you're just kind of floundering around, get back on the path that God has for you and let Him lead, guide, and direct you. You know, you may be saying right now, Jerry, I don't even know God's plan for my life. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Well, I think the awesome thing is that God puts down on the inside of us. I mean, even as small children, we all have desires and things that we gravitate to, things that we love, we enjoy doing. I know people that actually love numbers. They love numbers. They love figures. They could be a CPA or an accountant. They love working with numbers. That's not me. But if that's you, that's a God-given talent and a gift that he's put down on the inside of you. And that's your gifting. That could be towards your calling. If you love children, if you just naturally love being around children, then maybe there's something that God has for you with working with children. Or if you love to write, then maybe there's a book down on the inside of you that it's time to get started. If those dreams have lied dormant, then I'm encouraging you this year to dust off those dreams and move those roadblocks and those traps and get started on the plan and purpose that God has for your life. You're naturally good at something. We all have things. We all have giftings and talents that we're good at. But you have to just get alone with God. I mean, that's number one is get alone with Him, quiet time with Him, pray it out. You know, don't live a stagnant, mediocre, just going through the routine of life. Like I talked about before, John 10, 10 says abundant life. And that's what I'm just encouraging you with today is to remove those distractions, get back on the path and find out what it is that God has for you to do. We all have a plan. We all have a purpose. And it's up to you to do the work to get there. And there's a thousand ways or more that the enemy comes to try to distract us, to try to get us off course. But there's a few of them I want to talk to you about today. I think the number one, number one thing that's a distraction and becomes a detour in our lives is when we don't put God first place in our life, when we don't put him first in our life, when we get our eyes off of Jesus, when we start looking at the circumstances, we start looking at what's happening around us instead of keeping our eyes on Jesus, putting him first. Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. If our eyes are not on Jesus, we're going to be distracted. We're going to fall for those traps. We're going to fall for those distractions that come. But when you put Jesus first place in your life, you make him truly a priority in your life, then you're not going to be distracted. You're going to hear his voice and you're going to stay on the path that's right for your life. You know, I've found in my life, I've done this a few times, I'm so guilty. I've decided, okay, Lord, I'm going to spend some time with you today. And I have this cute little sunroom. It overlooks the lake. And that's like my prayer room. And I've oftentimes, I've said, okay, Lord, it's me and you today. I've gotten the kids off to school. My house is quiet. And I think, okay, I'm going to get my Bible and my notebook and, and I sit down and just have some alone time with God. So as I'm heading to my little sunroom, I think, wait, let me put a load of laundry in before I get started because, you know, I'm a multi multitasking mama, right? So I think, okay, I'll put a load of laundry in. I do that. I sit down. I got my blanket. I'm all comfy. I got my Bible. I've got my cup of tea or whatever it is. I'm ready to spend time with the Lord. But I start looking around, and my little sunroom is, is dusty. You know, I hadn't been in there a while. It's dusty. My plants look dry. They need some water. So I'm like, okay, hold on, God. I'll be right back. I, I'm going to go get, I'm going to dust this room, get some water from my plants. I'll be right back. So I go do that, but the washer's gone off. So let me put the clothes in the dryer now. So I put the clothes in the dryer. I come back. I sit down. And you know what? 
my alarm goes off on my phone that it's time to go pick up my kids. Like I've gotten distracted, I've gotten off course to spend alone time with God. Also, I've been guilty, maybe you have too. My alarm goes off in the morning and um, instead of seeking first the kingdom, that very first thing is, is spending time with the Lord, I grab my phone and I start going through social media and you know, looking at Facebook or Instagram or reading my emails. Well, let me reply to that person real quick. Well, now it's time to get ready for work and I gotta get up and get going. I'm sure you've been guilty of it too. But those are little distractions along the way to keep us from spending time with the Lord. And I think that's the most important thing is that we seek first the kingdom. Matthew 6, it says that seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. That's what a good God we serve is that he says, seek me first and all these things that you're stressed out about, I'll give them to you. I'll add them to your life. You don't even have to worry about it. But we tend to take things on our own, do things on our own, try to make things happen when we haven't put God first. So that's the number one thing is that to avoid a distraction and a detour is to make sure that you truly are making God first in your life. You're making him a priority so that when opportunities come for you to be distracted, you look at the word first. You, you get your answer from the word. Is that what God's telling me to do for my life instead of going with every whim and good idea that comes your way? Seek first the kingdom, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The Amplified of that same verse says, looking away from all that will distract. Looking away from all that distracts. You know, every single day you're going to have tons of opportunities to be distracted. Tons of ways to look at things and, and get your mind off of what Jesus would have you do. Get you off the path, get you off the course, looking left to right, being distracted by what's going on around you rather than looking unto Jesus and seeking him first. You know, if you have a goal this year to get out of debt, but some great thing comes your way, a new car, you're like, hey, that car is just exactly what I want, and you go and get yourself in debt getting a new car, you've gotten distracted. Your goal was to get out of debt, but you let this thing over here distract you. So every day we have opportunities. If your goal is to get out of debt, then that's your goal. You're looking towards that goal. You're looking with that purpose that God wants you out of debt. He wants you debt free. He wants you prosperous. He wants you successful. He doesn't want you living in debt. Then don't become distracted because that's what the enemy is going to do is try to get you in debt so that you're bound, you're stressed, you're depressed, you're trying to figure out how to pay all this debt off. Don't be distracted. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Think of all the mistakes that we made in life when we got distracted, when we got our eyes off of him. Listen to uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 26, the Amplified. Paul says, I run with purpose. I run with purpose in every step. I run with purpose in every step. That should be mine and your goal, is that we run with purpose in every step that we make. That we don't just wake up and haphazardly live our lives and whatever comes, comes. No, that we live with purpose. That everything we do, every step we take, every decision that we make is made with purpose because our eyes are on Jesus. Let's take a break right now. We'll be back in just a few moments. Now is the time for steadfast, unwavering, and unshakable faith. In the powerful three-CD series, How to Remove the Blessing Blockers, Jerry Savelle gives a personal checklist on how to discover specific areas where you may have stopped blessings from coming your way. God has given his blessing to you. Don't let anything stand in the way. Did you know there is a beginning, a middle, and an end to your faith project? In the CD teaching, Faith in the Middle Place, 
Jerry Ann Savell shows you how your attitude and actions in the middle place determine your outcome. Learn how to keep your faith moving forward in the middle place, no matter what is happening around you. Don't wait. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org now and request the Avoiding Distractions and Detours resource package featuring the three CD teaching, How to Remove the Blessing Blockers, and the message, Faith in the Middle Place. You can put action to your faith, remove any obstacles, and make sure that you're moving towards victory today. I really want to encourage you to go to your phone or the website and order these products. I know that they'll change your life. You know, we were talking about seek first the kingdom, Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom. When you seek first the kingdom, you put God priority in your life, then everything will fall into place. But when you tend to make yourself Lord of your life or you try to make things happen in your life, then it seems like there's chaos, there's confusion, there's stress. But when you seek Him first, I hear the Lord say that to me all the time. When I start to get overwhelmed, I get stressed out, I'm trying to make things happen, I hear Him say, Jerry, seek me first. Seek me first. The Passion Translation of that same verse says, constantly chase after. Constantly chase after. That's something you're doing on an ongoing basis. You know, Sunday is not enough. Church is good for us, but going to church is just not enough. You've got to keep your spirit man fed every single day, every single day so that you can make God decisions and not just good decisions, that you're constantly chasing after him, you're seeking after him so that when those detours and distractions come your way, you can just go right around them that you don't fall for every single one. I know there's been distractions in my life that came and I got hung up there for a while. And I sat there on the road, my, my destiny was sitting over here and I got caught up and distracted. And here I was sitting there in the middle of the road, distracted when all I had to do is go around it. So today that's what I'm telling you. If you're faced with a situation right now and you feel like you're overwhelmed you're stressed out, then you've allowed the circumstances you to be Lord of your, your life. You've, you're looking at the circumstances. You're not looking unto Jesus. And like Matthew 6 says, constantly chase after him. So when you put God first, again, like I said earlier, he's going to provide all these things that you have need of. It's not your job to be Lord of your life. So to me, that is the number one thing. If we can make Jesus truly the Lord of our life and it not just be something we say, but it's something we live, it's something we do, it's something we practice, that every single day we get up and say, Lord, what is your will for me today? What would you have me do today? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say today? And that you make him Lord of your day Lord of your steps, that your steps are ordered by him, then you will not fall for those distractions and detours that come. Listen to Psalms 5. This is a little book I got called Psalms Now. And I, it's so funny, I found it at a garage sale probably 20 years ago. And this sits on my nightstand and I read from it almost every single night. It's such a good book. But Psalms 5 from Psalms Now says, Help me walk in your path for my life. Give me grace to overcome the many obstacles. He will give you the grace. God will give you the grace. There's nothing too difficult for God to get you through. He can walk you through it, whatever challenge, whatever opportunity that you're facing right now in your life, He will give you the grace to go around it. You don't have to live day to day stressed out in the circumstances of life trying to figure this thing out on your own, he will give you the grace. But again, it goes back to our point of seeking first the kingdom. Seeking first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. It says to constantly chase after. So I'm challenging you with that today. Make some adjustments if you need to. Make some different priorities in your life. Get up every morning and say, today I make Jesus the Lord of my life. Today, 
Don't let distractions come to get you off course from where he wants you. Another thing I want to talk to you about, a second way, there's, again, there's thousands of ways that the enemy comes to bring through distractions and detours. But the second one I want to talk to you today is about comparison. You know, when we start looking at what other people are doing, what other people are accomplishing in their life, then we start to feel insignificant. We start to feel like we haven't accomplished enough. We start to feel um, worthless or, you know, I'm, I'm 50 years old and I haven't done much with my life. We start comparing ourselves. And again, the enemy has won. He's got you distracted. He's got your focus off of Jesus. And he's got you looking at what other people are doing and what you're not doing. So, um, again, I just want to encourage you that you be aware, that you be mindful of these distractions. And one of them is through comparison. And as much as I love social media, it can be a distraction. You start looking at what other people are doing, what other people have accomplished in their lives. Say you never go anywhere, and it seems like everybody's posting these amazing vacation pictures, and you think, wow, I never go anywhere. Or maybe you're being challenged to lose weight, and everybody is showing how much weight they've lost. Or you're single, and everybody seems to be getting married or having a wedding, and you feel like I'll be single the rest of my life. Well, that's where the enemy wants you getting distracted and looking at what other people are doing instead of looking at the path and the plan that God has for your life. He has your life figured out. He already has it set, but you've just got to take the steps to get there. Not looking to the left, not looking to the right, but looking ahead, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Um, there's a scripture I found that says, um, Proverbs 4.25 in the message. It says, keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all sideshow distractions. Watch your step. And the road will stretch out smooth before you. Look neither right nor left. Again, that's a distraction. But if you keep your eyes straight ahead on Jesus then you're not worried about what other people are doing. And oftentimes when you start to look at what other people are doing and you start comparing your lives, then jealousy can come in. And you don't want to go there. You don't want to be jealous of what God is doing in someone else's life. You want to be excited for what God's doing in their life. And I've learned from my dad that when good things happen to other people, you just raise your hand and praise God and go, I'm next. I'm next. So when you see something happening great in somebody else's life, don't allow that to become a distraction. Don't allow jealousy or envy to come in. But you just rejoice for what God is doing in their life and just know that you're next, that it's your opportunity next. Again, I'm going to say it over and over. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. If you're looking unto Jesus, then you're not going to be distracted what other people are doing around you. You're going to rejoice for them. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that God has a plan to prosper you. He has plans to give you a hope and a future. You do have a hope. You do have a future. And he wants to prosper you. So don't get sidetracked looking at what others are doing and what's happening to other people. Number one, put him first. Number one, put him first. Number two, don't be distracted by what's happening to other people. I saw this quote the other day. It says, don't compare your behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. You know, we tend to put our, our good side, our best things on social media. We don't put like the dirt, the, the things we're going through, the challenges, the opportunities. We want to shine. We want to show everybody how great our lives are. Don't be distracted by that. You just stay planted where you are, focused on what you're determined to do, the course that God has for your life, and don't allow distractions to get you off course. I want to read a few of these scriptures from Psalms now. I just love this book. Honestly, it's changed my life. It's just a different translation of the Psalms, but it's Psalms now, verse, or chapter 25. It says, Those who walk in your course for their lives find contentment and fulfillment. When you're walking His course for your life, you're going to find contentment and fulfillment. I found that in my life 
that when I'm off course, I'm not on his course, that there's no contentment, there's no fulfillment, that I'm trying to make things happen on my own. But when you're on his course, he promises this. His word does not lie to us. His word is faithful, it's true, and he's saying to you, my child, if you will follow after me, then your life will have contentment and fulfillment. That sounds to me like John 10, 10, abundant life. When you follow after him. Psalms 27, it says, he will sustain me and keep me on course through the dangers and the pitfalls of life. Isn't that exciting to know that even when things come, that he will sustain you and keep you from the pitfalls and dangers of life. I really want to encourage you to go and get these products right now. Don't delay. You know that faith comes when you put on the word of God. So I challenge you to go get the product and your life will be changed. Now is the time for steadfast, unwavering, and unshakable faith. In the powerful three-CD series, How to Remove the Blessing Blockers, Jerry Savelle gives a personal checklist on how to discover specific areas where you may have stopped blessings from coming your way. God has given his blessing to you. Don't let anything stand in the way. Did you know there is a beginning, a middle, and an end to your faith project? In the CD teaching, Faith in the Middle Place, Jerry Ann Savelle shows you how your attitude and actions in the middle place determine your outcome. Learn how to keep your faith moving forward in the middle place, no matter what is happening around you. Don't wait. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org now and request the Avoiding Distractions and Detours resource package featuring the three CD teaching, How to Remove the Blessing Blockers and the message, Faith in the Middle Place. You can put action to your faith, remove any obstacles and make sure that you're moving towards victory today.